answering the hottest questions from quarter two off of Say Technologies. So many dumb questions. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. As a reminder, you're watching the full live version here on my Tesla Live, the one that goes out on Fridays. Or you're watching the condensed version over the weekend. It's whichever one's on the screen. You guys know how that works. Eh, subscribe to both. So, Say Technologies. Kind of neat. You get to ask questions, and they are ranked both by how many upvotes they get, how many shares are involved in asking the question. It's a neat way to get answers to your questions. And the company picks and chooses which ones they want to answer, but it's still better than anything else. You know, better than nothing, certainly. So let's get into some of those super great questions. Any update with Tesla HVAC that can be shared? No, no, there isn't. There isn't, and we know because we'd be seeing it or hearing from it. And they go through products one at a time. I did find this super neat article that says, yeah, they've talked about it, but it's not really doing anything. And as I'm reading this, I'm like, wow, this reads like it's search engine optimized. Ah, yes, it is. This is a company. Wow. Whoever you hired for this did a good job because you came up really high. Nothing to share. Not yet. It's not time. Will Tesla's Texas Gigafactory produce vehicles besides the Model Y and Cybertruck? And if so, when? So the short answer is, uh, yes, of course it will. And when it makes sense. Now, we originally believed that Texas was going to start by making the Cybertruck, but uh, demand for the Model Y eclipsed even Elon's most ambitious hopes. So they kind of switched gears and decided to sell something that they understand a little better. And I couldn't find the article, but we know that the Model 3 and Y um, were being built for at least a short time in Shanghai on the same line. Because these cars share 75% of the same parts. Little differences, of course. But there's no reason they couldn't also make threes on the same line or in a parallel line. So when will they make cars other than the Y and the Cybertruck? As soon as it makes sense. What is the status of the $25,000 car? Um, this is an aspirational question. You're hoping to get an answer that you don't already know because we know it's on hold. There's no reason to make a $25,000 car yet. This is a neat design. I like this render. They've got too much on their plate. We've got the Cybertruck, the Semi, and the Roadster. We're still waiting on all of those. One thing at a time. Will the $25,000 vehicle ever happen? Uh, inflation suggests it can't. It may be a $30,000 vehicle instead. But we'll see what happens in coming quarters as the economy cools down a bit, which is a polite way of saying goes into a recession. How is the 4680 ramp going? And is Giga Texas producing cells yet? And for that matter, what are the biggest headwinds? What will production be at the end of the year? And what's the expected versus actual yield? So are they making them? Yeah, they are. We know from Jordan Giesegi's amazing video that the um, anode is dry battery electrode and the cathode is not. It's underway. The plan A is dry battery electrode, dry battery cathode. Plan B is mix and match, which is what they're doing now. And plan C is uh, go ahead and expand it uh, to uh, use 2170s as well. Now the ramp is going slower than expected. In February, they announced that the Cato Road facility had made their millionth battery. Millionth? That's only like, what, 12,000 cars or something. Each car is 800, so that's not good. 12,000 cars? Ah, 1,200 cars? Eh, not enough cars. Not enough batteries. I thought they had warehouses full of them. But a million is less than I expected. But that's not a problem. Anyone can make a 4680. Can't they? Panasonic is. 
They're building a $4 billion factory in Kansas. It'll be the biggest lithium battery producer in North America. And they're making 4680s and they're making them for Tesla. This could, once ramped, address the shortfall that we've got for the semi, for the Cybertruck, and maybe for the other vehicles too, including the $25,000 model. The TQ. LG making 4680s as well. Samsung preparing their pilot line to make 4680s for Tesla. At Battery Day, Elon said, we're going to keep buying. Fellow battery producers, do not think we're trying to cut you out. We have an appetite that is insatiable for cells. If you make them, we will buy them. And if you look at the top 10 battery producers in the world, you've got CATL, Panasonic, Samsung, BYD, and LG. Those are the top five. Tesla buys from all of them. And they're probably going to be in that top five themselves once their battery factories get ramped. Number six is SK Innovation. Ford is using them. So are they making batteries? Yeah, of course they are. Joe Tetmeyer, who we talked about in the pre-show chat. Yeah, this is the battery line. It's running. This is from last month. These are where they're made. And they've been making them for some time. Tesla Giga Texas to also build Model Y with the 2170s. So this was discussed in an interview recently where Elon was saying that we needed to add the ability to make 2170 cars in Texas and the equipment we needed in order to do this was stuck in China because they weren't shipping. Nothing was shipping during the shutdown. But we know that the equipment is there and that's plan C. There's always a plan B and a plan C. There's backups and backups for the backups. What will the initial applications be for Teslabot? And at what point do you see it generating meaningful revenue? And where will it be made? Where will it be made? Easy question, nothing difficult there. It can be made anywhere. It doesn't need a factory the size of a car factory. It's not as big as a car. It's much easier to make something that's that much smaller. So it can be made anywhere. But what are the applications? Who would use it? Well, early ones, and by the way, Teslabot, super real, got a whole video about it. Who will use it? Use it in a factory. Why not? That's a good first use. Put it in your own factory. If it can't work in your own factory, you've got more work to do, and if it can, use it. Who else could use it? I don't know, SpaceX. They already are using robots from Boston Dynamics. Who else could use robots? Well, did you know that in mining or even tunneling, bit boring, I know, one of the biggest costs is safety. If you can remove the human from the equation, you can remove the safety costs associated with humans. So like this guy is doing a job faster and better by operating this robot. And this much smaller man is saving time by operating this larger man who's operating this robot. Kind of looks like Master Blaster from Mad Max. When is the Tesla stock split? And for that matter, would you consider buying back shares if we can maintain profitability? So first answer is no one cares. It's not important. We still have to get the shareholder approval to increase the number of shares that can be issued in order to facilitate a split. Probably gonna happen and probably gonna happen and then the split will happen in a few months. <laughs> and as for paying dividends, I made a whole video about that too. The short answer is there are still too many worlds left to conquer. If Tesla had a trillion dollars in cash laying around, and they wanted to deploy RoboTaxi, a trillion dollars only gets you 20 million cars at 50 grand. And for Megapack installations, those are $100 million each. A trillion, a trillion dollars only gets you 10,000 of those. 10,000, that's a lot. It is. Uh, but we've got, in order to build 10,000 Megapack 
locations, you'd probably need another Megapack factory. So there remain far too many worlds left to conquer. When will the Cybertruck officially be available? Well, you know, uh, officially, there is no officially. It's like the people who say, uh, well, you know, Elon, well, at Battery Day, Elon promised. No, he doesn't promise. He states targets and objectives. But this is a better question, not so much for the shareholder call, but, uh, the, but for the Googles. Because Tesla Cybertruck will go on sale in 2023, says a noted internet troll, Elon Musk. So the answer is, uh, we've seen reports that the equipment needed to build the Cybertruck has been at least ordered, if not yet delivered, to Texas. That would sound reasonable for mid-2023. Where will the next Gigafactory be built? Well, again, you know, you guys, I don't think you guys would ask these questions. You're here, you probably know more or less the answers. We covered it. We covered it all. I went through, what, 40 different candidate countries? But the short answer is, we still don't know. It could be anywhere. It could be a number of places. It does, in my opinion, need to diversify. Indonesia, I know they want a full everything factory. They may get that. They may just get a battery factory. They do have great uh, access to minerals and whatnot. And they have the political will. They have the desire to get them in and get things a going. Do you have a confirmed, validated bubble for Shanghai operations that you can deploy in case another lockdown is enacted? Can you speak to it? Expected impact if needed, etc. They absolutely have uh, a, a plan. You know they do, even if they just reused the old plan. But I assume they have more ideas for how to work it better next time. I assume they would go straight into a bubble production. Uh, it would impact production substantially, depending on how long it is, because uh, they still need parts to build the car. They cannot make everything in-house. They do as much vertical integration as they can, but even with that, you'll run out of steel. If this gives us an exciting answer, then it's a great question. The short answer is, yeah, we, we assume they do, and we'd be crazy to assume they don't. How do you feel the progress of FSD is going, and does Andre Carpathy leaving have any significant impact on any timelines or potential progress? This is hotly discussed. Regardless of the answer, I know what Tesla's answer will be. Regardless of reality, they will say, this changes nothing. Our timelines are still as good as ever. Although I would argue not as good as they were four, five, six years ago. There was a tweet last November or something where Elon had said, I know Andre and myself, Elon, get a lot of credit for directing full self-driving, but it's not us, it's Ashok. I hope I'm saying that right, going off memory who's actually directing the deeper day-to-day -day stuff. So that, I think, is the answer to that. It'll move forward either way. The real trick is, like so many things, it's impossible until it isn't. How are Tesla self-driving semi-trucks coming along? That's two questions in one, isn't it? If self-driving is handled for cars, it's handled for trucks. So much of what semi-trucks do, especially long haul, is monotonous. And the even autopilot, regular autopilot, would reduce the stress and fatigue that comes with long haul trucking. But how are the semis themselves coming? Well, I happen to have an inside source in Nevada. I don't see him here today, but uh, he, uh, says they are making the motors, that they've made quite a few trucks worth of motors. 
and that they box him up and then they go somewhere and he doesn't know where. So they could be assembling more test trucks. The truck is coming, but it's coming slow. And I think the price on it is all wrong. The Tesla Semi is slated to be, based on the original announcement so many years ago, December of 2017? No, can't be that long ago. It was, wasn't it? Oh, Lord. The Tesla Semi comes in two variants, 150000 and 180000 Those are too low. Those prices are too low. Other rivals are selling electric trucks in the 350000 to 500000 range. I think it's Mack Truck, whose the order book is open. You can order one today, and they'll build it. Their truck is 500000 And it's dollars and cents. It's just either worth it or it ain't. And there's going to be a lot of early uh, growing pains in terms of servicing these trucks. Nice thing with a Mac is you've already got an established service network that can be just expanded to also handle electric trucks. How do Tesla plan to handle all the misinformation, attacks, and fake news against Tesla and Elon Musk? We've been dealing with this and it affects the stock. <sighs> Agreed. I am an advocate for Tesla getting a PR department. Tesla doesn't need one. Really? Because they have one in China and they have one in Germany. What makes the US so special? Is it that Elon's German is quite terrible? Because it is. Even having one person as a rapid response team to handle the FUD of the day would be valuable. Uh, one thing that was pointed out uh, on Patreon by Who Is This in the chat was that uh, when Berlin got to a thousand cars a week, there was, there was news. It was a press release. It appears Texas has done that. Not a peep. You're relying on speculation from people like me and Joe Tetmeyer to get the word out. And it works, but it sucks. Deal with the FUD. Deal with it. You remember when they had a track day to roll out um, track mode? They brought in all kinds of car reviewers and YouTubers and whatnot. And they all went out to a test track and got to drift and they brought a couple of extra tires just in case and they burnt through, I assume, all of them. That's something we need again, man. That's something we need. So we are about to get into my Q&A hole. <laughs> uh, quick thanks as always to my amazing Patreons who get early access, bonus content, and add free experience for the most part. For the most part. And, uh, you know, all that good stuff. Get to chat with me. Get to give me feedback on... Well, the, the there it is, and the there you go. If you want to see the full, uncut, 30-ish minute version of this episode, head over to the second channel, link in the description, and subscribe over there if you want to catch these live each Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific, as well as the Fast Charging with B&B &B podcast, co-hosted with Bear from Bear's Workshop. So, what did I miss or misunderstand? Tell me in the comments, and stay tuned, uh, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the other side.